Hi, I'm Mike Wheatley with Makersquare, and this is Say What? Introduction to Developer Tools. This video will walk you through very common developer tools that are used out in the industry. These tools help us developers build out websites in an easier fashion. I'll take you through each tool and give you an example of the tool and briefly show you how you can use the tool. Text editor. One common tool that developers use is a text editor. And we're not talking about Microsoft Word. There are a lot of tools out there that help you organize your code and view it in a more readable fashion than you'd find in something like Microsoft Word. One commonly used tool is Sublime Text. Sublime Text colors certain keywords for you and will indent places in your code that need to be indented. Let's take a look at some HTML in Sublime. Here you can see how the tags are colored and that your links are color colored, and your keywords have different color also. And there's certain indentations that show you how the tree structure is laid out. Sublime is also handy because you can select a layout and look at multiple files at once, showing you how your code interacts with each other. If you wanted to create a new JavaScript file, first you would open up a new file in Sublime. You would name the file and make sure it had a .js extension. This way, Sublime knows that you're going to be writing JavaScript. Let's take a look at writing out a function in Sublime. As you saw in my text editor, as I type, certain words were highlighted for me. That way, when I come back and look at this piece of code, it's easy for me to quickly tell what I'm trying to do with this code. Here you can see where you can go to download Sublime Text. If you go to sublimetext.com, you can check out their documentation and download it for your very own computer. Terminal. Another tool that's commonly used by a developer is a command line. The command line lets you navigate through files and folders on your computer without having to use the graphical interface. Command lines also let you issue commands to certain processes on your computer and interact with things via the web. Here on my computer, you can see I have the finder open and there are two folders currently showing in my finder. Over here in the command line, if I wanted to view these two folders, I could type ls and there you can see that I get the two folders in my command line. If I wanted to go into one of the folders, I would type cd and then type out the name of the folder. Over here, as you know, you can double click on the folder and get those files that are inside the folder. In the command line, once again, you can type out the ls command and it'll give you a list of those files. Another important piece of the command line is importing tools from other processes that exist. One tool that's common is Sublime interacting with the command line. If you type subl and period, it'll open up all the files and folders of the folder that you're currently inside of. At that point, you can use Sublime and do your normal work. Another common way to use the command line is when you interact with GitHub. Via the command line, you can push and pull your code from the repo that's sitting on the web. It makes working with GitHub much faster and much easier. Chrome Dev Tools. Something that you will find very valuable when you start building out your website are the Chrome Developer Tools. The Chrome Developer Tools give you important information about how your code is behaving within the web browser. If you go to developer.chrome.com slash devtools, you can get an overview of the tools and it'll give you ways that you can access the tools and different windows and views of the tools. The way that you can access the tools in your own Chrome browser is to click on this hamburger menu and go down to more tools and then click on developer tools. Here, you'll get an overview of the types of things you can do with the developer tools. For example, on this elements tab, you'll get a list of all the different HTML elements that are currently being viewed in the browser. There's also a place to see the console here. You can get some error handling and you can actually type code directly into the console if you would like to. There's also a place to view the source code a network that shows you what resources are being used, and a place where you can check securities. There's also a resources place in case you're interacting with databases. 
you will use these dev tools over and over again, so it's important to become familiar with them. They make your job much easier, and they let you interact with the code in a much better fashion. Document object model. Speaking of developer tools, one popular way that they are used is to check out the document object model. Usually this is referred to as the DOM. It's a tree-like structure that gives you a standard way to access your HTML elements that are currently being viewed in the browser. Here's the Spotify page, and now we've inspected it to see the DOM. As you can see, it's laid out as a tree, so you can open up different legs of the tree and see what's inside of them. That way, when you do need to get to a single HTML element in the DOM, you can traverse it by going one step at a time. This is one way that the developer tools help you, because you can visually see how the DOM is laid out, and that way, using your code, you can access a piece of the DOM and perform work with it. Get. Another great tool that all developers need to learn is Git. Git is version control software. That means that you and one of your buddies can work on the same piece of software at the same time. If he makes a change and you make a change to the same file, Git will alert you and ask you if you want to overwrite his change. That way, multiple people can be editing the same piece of code. It's very powerful to have this system in place because you don't want to overwrite work done by other people. Git is just one type of version control out there. There are many different ways that you can approach version control, but Git is very popular in the industry and it's very lightweight. It's also open source, so it's built by the community, so it works very, very well. Let's take a look at how Git can be used. Here on my computer, you see that I have two new files that haven't been added to my repo. If I wanted to add these to my repo, I could do git add and then git commit dash m and add a message. That way, they're committed to the repo and anybody else who wants to make changes will have to check these changes and make sure that their changes fit in with my changes. GitHub. Let's take a look at another tool called GitHub. GitHub is essentially a hosting service where you can push and pull your Git repositories. It's a social platform, so anybody in the world can go check out your code and comment on what you've done. They can use your code, add features, or make suggestions, fix bugs, and that way you can then review these suggestions and pull them into your code if they make sense. It's a great way for you to work with people all across the world or specific to your company. Let's take a look really quick at my profile on GitHub. Here you can see the repositories that I've contributed to. Here's one where I've built a browser-based rhythm game. And if you click into the repo here, you can see all the files and folders that are associated with my project. And that essentially makes up what we call a repo. What's specific to a GitHub repo is that it has a .git file so that you can use those command line interface tools to interact with GitHub via your own command line. Another reason GitHub is so valuable is because of open source projects. This has allowed brains from all across the world to contribute to a single project. If you've heard that two heads are better than one, seven billion must be better than mine. This has been part one of Introduction to Dev Tools. Go ahead and click on the video in the lower right to watch part two. If you'd like to find out how you can become a software engineer, head over to mks.io slash learn to code. Thanks for watching.